Assalamu alaikum. My dear Nasa Shabla is back again before you. My dear students, how are you? I think all of you are doing well. Um, you know, in my last class, I was with the students of a second year, and today again, I'd like to welcome the students of a second year because, uh, you know, in the last class, I completed uh, the poem Chinchon Abbey. Chinchon Abbey, uh, I completed uh, up to stanza five, I think stanza five uh, of this poem, and. Uh, today I have to complete the rest of the the rest of the uh, stanzas of the poem. So let's start with the text. So dear students, in, uh, in the last class I uh, discussed uh, up to this stanza. Uh, today once again I am going to uh, discuss uh, or explain some some sentences uh, of this stanza like. You know, and I have felt a presence that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply interfused, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, and round ocean and the living air, and the blue sky and in the mind of man, a, a, a motion of a spirit that impels all thinking, things, all objects of all of all thought, and also do all things. Therefore, I am still a lover of the meadows and the woods of, and the mountains and of all that we behold from the green arts and, and of all the mighty world of, of eye and ear. So, uh, in, these, uh, in these lines, we find um, that the poet is giving uh, his philosophy of nature. Uh, the, 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 philosoph the philosophy is uh, you know, called pantheism. So, what is pantheism? Pantheism means the uh, existence of God everywhere in nature. So here uh, the question is, where is the, where is the spirit or where is the God in nature? So here we we find that God dwells in the light of the setting sun, in round ocean, living air, blue sky, and in the mind of man. So God moves through all the subjects or rolls through all things. So God is all, and all is God. So this is called pantheism. The poet loves um, uh, loves the woods, the mountains, and the fields, since they are the visible shape of God. So nature is the source of purest thought. She is the guide and uh, the, the gar and guardian of moral being. So the last three lines of this stanza are very are very important. Uh, that uh, well pleased to recognize the nature and the language of the sense, the anchor of my purest thought, the nurse, the guide. The guardian of my heart and soul of all uh, all my moral being. So here in this stanza, the speaker is happy to see the presence of God in nature, and language and the language of the sense. So only uh, the time the speaker comes up with yet more ways of referring to the uh, presence. So he calls it the anchor of his purest thoughts, the the nurse, the guide, the guardian of his heart and soul of all his moral being. Um, so clearly the presence is very important to the speaker. So uh, let's move on to the next stanza. This is the final stanza of this poem. That is, nor perchance if I were not thus uh, taught, uh, should I the more suffer my genial spirits to decay. But thou wert with me here upon the banks of this fair river, thou my dearest friend, my dear, dear friend, and in thy voice I catch the language of my former, former heart, and read my former pleasures in the shooting light of thy wild eyes. O oh, yet a little while may I behold in thee what I was once, my dear, dear sister, and this, uh, and in this fear I make, knowing that nature never did betray the heart that loved her. This line is very important. Nature never did betray the heart that loved her. So it, it 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 is her privilege through all the years of this of these our life to lead um, from joy to joy. Okay. So uh, uh, next lines there, but she can so in, uh, so inform the mind that is within us, so impress with quietness and beauty, and so fit with lofty thoughts that neither evil tongues, rash judgments, nor the sneers of selfish men nor greetings where no kindness is, nor all the dreary intercourse of daily life, shall ever prevail against us or disturb our cheerful faith that all which we, we behold is, is full of blessings. Therefore, let the moon shine on thee in thy solitary walk, uh, and let the misty mountain <clears throat> winds be free to blow against thee, 
and and after years when these well ecstasies shall be matured into a sober pleasure when thy mind shall be a <clears throat> mention of mention for all lovely forms thy memory be as a dwelling place for all sweet sounds and harmonies so these are the lines from the final stanza uh, so here the final stanza opens with another gear shift the speaker says that even if he were not thus taught even if he had not learned about the presence in nature he still would not suffer his genial spirit to decay and he calls uh, here we find that he calls he is calling uh, his sister his dearest friend his dear dear sister um, dorothy williams uh, you know williams sister his, his the name of his sister was uh, dorothy versus so from these lines we can tell that he really likes him that and he says that he, he her voice reminds him of the way um, he used to feel that uh, and her wild voice remind him reminds him of um, her wild remind him of his former pleasures okay so look at the lines uh, nor perchance uh, i should be where i no more can hear thy voice nor catch from uh, thy wild eyes these gleams of past existence Will thou then forget that on the banks of this delightful stream we stood together, and that I I so long a worshipper of nature? So here, um, Wordsworth is you know um, is Wordsworth Wordsworth himself himself is declare is declaring uh, the point the important uh, point of point that um, he is a worshipper of nature. He that came unwearied in in that service, rather say with warmer love, oh with far deeper zeal. Of holier love, nor wilt thou then forget, and then after that, after many wanderings, many years of absence, the steep woods and lofty cliffs, and this green pastoral landscape, were to me more dear, both of both for themselves and for thy sake. So uh, here the point, uh, the poet says that um, uh, her voice uh, reminds him of the way he used to feel, uh, and her wild eyes remind him of his former pleasures. Uh, so the speaker seems to be saying that present day Dorothy uh, reacts to nature in the same way that William did when he was here five years ago. He says that he can see his past self in her. So the speaker um, uh, prays that he can continue to to see his former self in his sister. So uh, you know there is a um, uh, one, there is uh, another um, uh, famous line of the poem that nature uh, never did betray the heart that loved her. So uh, here the uh, poet uh, wants to say that uh, nature has not betrayed him because uh, he he loved he had loved her. So the speaker here uh, lists some of the possible distraction like evil tongue, rash judgments, sneers of selfish men, the dreary dreary intercourse as well. In uh, in the line uh, in the line uh, 134 uh, from the line 134 to 141 we find that the speaker is so confident that nature will uh, nature will answer his prayer. Uh, the speaker wants Dorothy to experience nature the way that William experienced it five years ago. So he wants wants her to have the same wild ecstasy uh, that William did. From the line one forty two to one forty six, we are again verse uh, 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 says that if all this happen, if Dorothy's mind gets turned into a scrapbook of her current impressions. Then uh, later on, if solitude or fear or pain, grief should bother her, she will be will be able to look into the scrapbook of her memory and have healing uh, thoughts that will make her feel better. And the mm, uh, and from the line one forty six to one fifty fifty nine, we we find that the speaker is seeing in Dorothy's wild eyes or his. collections of the way um, he reacted to things because Dorothy's present reactions are so similar okay so now the speaker imagines a future a, a future after he has died after he has where no more can hear thy voice so this could just mean that he is he is imagining a future when they are not together anymore but it seems more uh, uh, dramatic to imagine 
to uh, so to imagine that it is after uh, his death and she is still alive that means his sister is still alive so he asked Dorothy if she forget having stood together on the banks of the way after he has gone but he asks uh, he asks he is asking but you know he doesn't need a, a, any answer to his question because uh, of course um, uh, she uh, will not forget him so she will not forget him so he says that after all of his wandering and many years of absence the the view from the banks of the way are even more precious to him than they were before both for his uh, for his own sake and for her sake so these are the paraphrases or the stanza wise explanation um of tintern abbey um so so uh, dear students uh, now i am going to uh, make um, another critical summary of this poem that is tintern abbey Tintern Abbey is considered as a kind of monologue in verse, as Wordsworth confessed that he composed it in his mind when he, um, while uh, he was walking through the river way. So there is, uh, you know, Wordsworth's realization of God in nature, uh, uh, and uh, he got sensuous delight in in it, and it is all in all to him. So Tintern Abbey impressed. um he most when he had first visited the place and he has again come to this the same place where he, there are, there are, there are lofty cliffs uh, the plots of uh, you know cottage grounds uh, hedgerows orchard crops and copses and you know he is glad to see uh, again uh, the hedge uh, the hedgerows um sportive woods uh, pastoral farms and green doors so this lonely place uh, the bank of the river and the you know the rolling waters from uh, the mountain springs present a uh, uh, panoramic light or beautiful panoramic light so the solitary place reminds the poet of vagrant dwellers um, and hermit's cave so this image evoke not only a uh, pure nature uh, uh, but also they evoke um, a life of the common people uh, in harmony with uh, in harmony with the nature uh, this is this uh, this is from the first section and uh, the second section the second section begins with uh, with the meditation the poet now realizes here that these beauteous forms of nature have been with him uh, deep seated in his mind wherever he went and nature used to make him feel uh, it uh, at the level of you know of the impulse rather than in his waking consciousness and in you know in past nature um, haunted he says in this poem that uh, in past nature uh, haunted him like a passion and it was um, an appetite to him but that time is past uh, you know he, he he has become mature so in nature he finds the uh he hears the sad music of of humanity the third stanza continues a kind of uh, you know a doubt he he doubts for just a moment whether he is uh, thought about uh, the influence uh, of nature is vain but he cannot go on uh, he thanks the sil- sylvan way uh, for the everlasting influence imprinted uh, imprinted on his mind and in the you know fourth stanza uh, we notice uh, the development and uh, the uh, of his personality and his philosophic mind as well so now the poet is able to feel uh, the jerking of elevated thought uh, sense sublime and the you know, working of of super power supreme power in the light of the setting sun in the round ocean in the blue sky um in the mind of man that is called uh, as i have told you that this this is this this is the philosophy given by wordsworth and this philosophy is called pantheism so he says uh, that uh, nature is a nurse a guide um, the guardian of his heart and soul so the poet comes to conclu- uh, you know comes to one point the uh, one important conclusion that is that he is now consciously uh, in love with nature and the fifth uh, 
and the last stanza uh, you know continues with the same uh, meditation uh, from a uh, meditation from where the poet addresses um, uh, his sister Dorothy who uh, whom he blesses and gives uh, the advice about what he has learned from nature and he says that nature has never betrayed his heart and that is why uh, they had been living um, uh, from joy to joy and the conclusion to the poem takes us almost cyclically back to a physical view of um, lofty cliffs uh, you know steep deep uh, steep uh, pastoral uh, a green pastoral landscape in which the meditation of the poem is happening so uh, this is the critical summary of Tintern Abbey, but I want to uh, mention an, uh, uh, another thing that mm, the, the poem gives us the, you know, uh, valuable and, and uh, uh, valuable um, and uh, um, important analysis of different stages, uh, well, different stages of, you know, um, of the poem, uh, different stages of uh, Wordsworth's, um, uh, you know, Wordsworth's description of nature in this poem. The first one is um, the extreme sensuous delight in, that he has uh, found in nature. Uh, then he uh, finds uh, the uh, presence of divine spirit or presence of God in nature. Then he uh, uh, finds the uh, communication or connection of human sorrows with the nature. So these are the critical uh, appreciation. Um, another thing that I want to say that the language that Wordsworth, Wordsworth uh, has used in this poem, the language is very simple, uh, simple to understand. Uh, he has used uh, alliterations, um, um, a lot of images, uh, metaphors and similes in this poem. You know, image, images are very important uh, of Chinchernabhi. Uh, you, that uh, you, if you go through the poem, you will find that uh, he um, uh, he has used of a lot of images from nature, like uh, mountain cliffs, uh, lofty cliffs, mountain springs, water rolling down from mountain springs, uh, hedgerows, uh, cottage grounds, um, uh, um, green farms. Uh, uh, smoke rising from uh, from you know from hermit's cave so so these are of these are very important image Im images that Wordsworth has used in the poem so dear students please read uh, the poem uh, over and over again try to understand every line uh, of the poem and find out the figure of speech that Wordsworth has you had you have uh, you know has used like uh, similes, metaphors, images, alliterations, etc. So um, that is all for today. Uh, stay fine and safe. I know I will come uh, with another topic in the next class. Until then, Allah Hafiz.